So we have created walls right here. If you click on one of the walls and you can see here that you have an arrow. Normally that arrow shows you the exterior side of your uh, wall system. So this is good. The brick uh, is at the exterior face or side of your building. But you can easily flip this. So let's change the detail level to fine. Okay, save the project. Change the detail, lev detail level to fine. So you can see here the different layers of your walls. Okay, go to shaded. So you can see that the brick is here at the exterior. But you can always flip this if needed. Okay, so you can flip the wall if needed by clicking on the uh, double arrow. Right now, we don't need to do that. Okay. Select the wall, and let's look at the properties or layers of this particular wall. You can change the line weight by clicking here or typing TL so that you can see the lines properly with a thin line weight, especially if you are in a fine uh, detail level. Okay. So select the wall okay, and then click on edit type. Click on edit type, and you see here the properties of the wall. So the nice thing about Revit is that it actually can give you some of the thermal resistance, thermal mass, absorptance, heat transfer coefficient, and other values. So when you say building information modeling, you're actually really uh, modeling with uh, the information related to that building. If you click on edit structure values, you will see here the different layers. Now, be careful. When we talk of layers, we're talking of layers of an element such as a wall. So these are the different elements of or layers of the this wall system. So you have a brick. That's the finished material at 90 mm thickness. You have a structural membrane with a thickness of 190. Okay. Substrate metal furring at 42 mm thick. Fit, uh, finished material at the interior side. So notice this is the interior side made of gypsum wall board with a thickness of 16. You can click on the preview button right here and maybe change this to a section view so that you can see if I highlight any of the layers where that particular material is located. And of course, it shows you the proportion based on the thickness uh, of these materials, even the thermal air barrier. Now, there are times when you want to maybe lower the brick material. Okay, so you can do that by modifying this material clicking on the segment below the layer you want to modify and unlocking this layer. When you do that, click OK and click OK. You can cut a section through this building by selecting section here at the upper left corner where you have your quick tool menu. 
click, bring it down, click. You're now able to create a section view. That's your section view range. Okay, click outside to deselect and then double click on the section head. That will bring you to your section view. Okay, that's section number one. Let's increase the detail level to fine. And let's change the graphics or visual style to shaded. Okay, detail level to fine. Visual style shaded. So if you click this wall, you may you can now see that you have two grip marks. Okay. So let's say the foundation will go up to uh, about 450. So I can say for this wall, the base constraint it as is at level one with a base offset of 450. Move your cursor away and that wall will go up by 450. So your foundation can go up to that level. Okay, And at the same token, you can bring this brick down maybe to cover the connection between the two maybe your foundation wall and your brick. So you can do that by, again, editing the type, edit the value, modify, zoom in, select the segment, and unlock that layer. If you want the air property to also move down with the brick, you can click that and unlock. If you want this uh, substrate rigid insulation to go down as well, you can select that and unlock. Okay. One thing that you cannot do is unlock a layer that is not adjacent to the unlock layers. So if I unlock this and this rigid insulation is not locked or unlocked and you click OK, Revit will give you a warning. Extension layers at the base of the wall must be adjacent. Okay? So you can lock this and maybe unlock this and then unlock this, then that will be acceptable. Okay. But normally you won't you don't want to unlock all of this item. So modify lock modify lock modify lock. Now in the same token you can also do that at the top modify unlock Click OK, click OK, and if you do so, you now see two grips here, and you can e either bring this down or bring it up. To be more precise, you can select your wall, and instead of just bringing it up, you can change the top extension distance to an exact value of, let's say, 90 okay, or 100. And the base to an exact value of, instead of negative 136, you can say negative 150. Okay, or let's just say negative 250, just to demonstrate how you can control that uh, drop face. So that's what you call a drop face or base extension and top extension distance.
can control each wall or uh, you can always select the two walls or all the walls okay and change the base offset to negative 100 and the top extension distance to let's say 250 so if you select all walls all walls will have the same top extension distance and bottom or base extension distance now notice that this wall here okay the base distance or base offset is at 100 okay base offset is this different from the base extension distance so i should bring this back to zero okay. let's select all wall all walls okay base offset should all be zero and it's the base extension distance that should be changed so negative 100 so base offset is different from base extension distance okay now if you want the whole wall to go down or up by a certain distance from the level you can change the base offset so let's say uh, base offset of 450 okay. so the wall goes up your foundation wall can go here and your brick can go down a little bit to hide the connection between the wall and the foundation wall okay. and likewise here you can maybe cut this out up to here and maybe bring your brick up to cover the connection between the roof and your uh, wall systems. 